In November of 2021, Battlefield 2042 launched to the masses. Six months later, the game still hasn't received a Season 1 update, multiple bugs still exist, the community has tried to point out faults only to be met by disdain, and the population has dropped so hard that it's losing to Battlefield 4. Could be worse. But it's the worst case scenario for a brand new Battlefield. And it upsets me. I know I'm speaking into an echo chamber. Bashing on 2042 is as much of a common practice as breathing oxygen. And maybe this video, and the many, many like it, will age poorly because 2042 might turn around and be the best game EVAR. Or something. I originally wasn't going to make another video on 2042 until a full year, if not longer, after the initial launch. Yet I can't help myself taking in so much post-launch discussion and still feel not only disappointed, but confused. DICE and EA have made these mistakes before, and for a while it seemed that they were learning from them. Take for instance Battlefield 4. When that game launched, it was heavily questioned if it could pull out from its disastrous nosedive of a launch. Not only were they able to turn it around, they managed to release several games where stability was priority number one. I'm not saying that they were perfectly clean, but at least they were playable, and received the necessary bug fixes and balancing as time went by. These were during times where the community and DICE were working as close as they could be. Of course, there would be times of impotent rage and relentless memes, but instead of cowering, DICE embraced them and put themselves in the base's shoes, finding a resolve to appease everyone. Meanwhile, as for today's DICE, we have brutal expectations, legacy features like a normal scoreboard, and a mixture of silence and passive aggression. This isn't Hello Games, where that was a team of 25 at the time, making a massive universe. This is a studio with over 700 people, with the help of several other studios. Granted, the blame can be brought to EA as well, setting incredibly unrealistic deadlines that even for EA were out of the norm. Yet it's the fault of DICE as well as the apathy is so palpable it's killing what little community is left for 2042. Though, it's no surprise if you were watching from the sidelines. Let's step back for a moment, shall we? Battlefield 5 has had a pretty bumpy existence whether that be from the marketing, game-breaking updates, and missing content. I still have issues with it. I wish the Russians were added, more iconic locations like D-Day were included, and better weapon customization. But calling it a colossal disappointment is brash. It still looks like Battlefield, it sounds like Battlefield, it plays like Battlefield, and it's fun, like Battlefield. However, even that game had its own DICE-branded arrogance. From the controversy of adding Whammon to a World War II setting, to missing some of the most basic of features, even a near collapse of its player base thanks to one update, which despite the outcry, DICE barely budged on the matter until the very last minute. At least by the abrupt end of support, it is in a much more enjoyable state today. That's the brilliance of these games in particular. They all share the same name and have similar mechanics, but they all play different enough where they feel familiar but don't stray too far. Four excels in constant fast-paced modern action, taking place in massive cities and heights. Battlefield 1 plays slightly slower thanks to the weapons, but has a visceral and disturbing nature because of the visual and audible design. And Battlefield 5 plays like a mixture of 4 and 5, with an emphasis in holding the line. Despite the resurgence that all these games have had, it did mark a new chapter for DICE. Where the studio once followed in its own direction and was the leader, is now playing Follow the Leader. Probably the best tease to come for the franchise would be Firestorm. N no, not that one. That one. And the premium character skins in 5. The former showing that they want those sweet, sweet Fortnite numbers. 
and the latter showing that they wanted memorable characters for multiplayer. Neither of which really found success. Firestorm was a dead mode after a few months from launch. And while I can't necessarily prove the sales numbers for the microtransactions, I'm pretty certain most people got the premium character skins by getting Battlefield 5 Premium during a sale. It wraps around back to my previous point of DICE, not listening to its player base. People liked the overall gameplay of a traditional class-based battlefield with some cosmetic options, not knock off Apex Legends. It doesn't make any financial sense, let alone creative sense, to remake something that no one wanted, especially when that remake already exists and is infinitely more interesting and made by a more caring team. Seriously, what were they thinking? As for the character-based system that has been jammed into 2042, what I find baffling is that DICE already found a middle ground that made it fair for all. And that can be found in Battlefront 2. No, not that one. That one. Now, this was a disastrous launch, but for a completely different reason. Fuck! Fuck! Battlefront 2 was already in a treacherous situation, with the first DICE made Battlefront being considered lackluster. Throwing in a pay to win loot box system was the final straw. In its current day, though, Battlefront 2 is in a much, much better state. But even in its early days, it found a resolve. Instead of having class-based or character-based combat, why not both? Of course, this isn't the first time DICE has done this. But in the past, the heroes were pickups on the map, encouraging players to just camp the spawn point till the players playing the hero dies. The solution they found for Battlefront 2 was simple. Make the player earn for it. The more you participate and help your team in any way, the more you can access the heroes. It's not the most perfect system, but it works a hell of a lot better than camping the spawn point on the map. This mixture works well for Star Wars since there are so many identifiable and cherished characters. But Battlefield doesn't have that luxury of memorable characters. Actually, they have four really good ones, but that's not enough. Fine, you want your goddamn characters? Fine, Dice. But don't be stupid about it. How about locking the characters behind classes so it's not a mishmash? Like Wingsuit Girl and Medic Woman being under Assault, or Grapple Hook Guy and Turret Boy under Engineer. That way, it's a balance of both having the classes that Battlefield fans are familiar with, and having the new characters being introduced and allowing customization without it being game-breaking. Does that make sense? Or is that expectation too brutal for you? Meanwhile, during all of this, the one bright spot in the 2042 package is left in limbo. The portal is probably one of the best ideas that DICE could have ever done for the franchise. Take all the arrows of Battlefield's past, and just let loose. Seeing a F-35 dogfight with a Spitfire, or revisit classic maps with new or old tech, unlimited possibilities for manipulation and entertainment. Fantastic. The problem is that it's attached to 2042. A lot of mechanics, visuals, and elements that come from 2042 exist here. People so badly want these elements removed that there are servers that come close to removing anything that vaguely looks like it came from 2042. But you can't escape it. And because so much of it is attached to 2042, not to mention you have to install 2042 in order to access the portal. It's almost better to just reinstall those old games individually. And at that point, the portal becomes somewhat pointless, especially with the lack of content updates for that too. I could go on for hours, days, weeks, even months at this point about issues I have with 2042. And if you've been watching my streams, I've already had. The lack of destruction, the terrible map design, gun balancing, kit balancing, too many vehicles, maps feeling rather empty despite the server size, sound design, visual design, customization, few weapons, cringy characters, all to end up with the same conclusion. 
that even if, and that's a pretty big if at this point, 2042 receives the fixes, updates, and added content, I just don't care. I don't care about 2042 because of the mismanagement behind it, a lack of vision in favor of chasing down profit. And here's the thing, you can have both. Battlefield 1 demonstrated that perfectly. You cannot have one or the other. Maybe I'm being too hard on DICE, but come on. The excuses and borderline toxicity against your own base is embarrassing. I always hope for the best when it comes to things that I want to succeed. I want 2042 to come back and be the game it could be. When that initial reveal trailer was shown to the world, it felt like DICE knew exactly what fans wanted. But it turned out we were catfished. We were catfished by a studio that didn't have to catfish in the past. Maybe some slips here and there. But they listened and worked to better themselves. But what the team as it is, with talks of a new battlefield being the hard focus, and with the removal and pushing back of wanted and necessary features, the franchise's future as a whole is in dire question. The fact that they still charge you for a premium for you to access it is downright embarrassing. Especially when you've learned time and time and time again. Maybe it will go free to play when the Season 1 update starts. But who knows? With the dust settling, there really is only one to blame. Dice, you upset me. I'm still working on a video review of sorts of the Fanatec GTDD bundle that I got. But as of recent, there's been a lot coming up in my life that I really can't discuss during this time. Production and stream delays will be happening for a bit. Not for shambles, but for everything else. Hopefully not for too long. But to those subbing to me on Twitch, thank you. I hit a big goal recently and it's all thanks to you. But before I stop talking about 2042 for some time, I have one thing left to say. Why is this game's soundtrack so shit? Oh my god! Where video? Can't find it, it's lost. Why video? I don't know. Favorite Weenie Hut driver. It would have been Dollar, but now he's a big boy now. Least favorite. And why is it screen? This is still shit. Oh god. He's- OH MY GOD! Oh my god, screen. What is the best sequel? Oh man. Oh god. I want to say Psychonauts 2. It's pretty much an expansion on what made the original good, but better. Engaging story, combat improvements, needed updates to the visuals, while still retaining the art style. Though I tend to flip-flop around with my opinions on favorite anythings. It's Psychonauts 2 today, but it could be Ace Combat 7, or Bioshock Infinite, or Call of Duty 4. You know what? Fuck all that. It's Stanley Parable Alter Deluxe. What is the worst sequel? Take a guess. What's a non-racing game developer you would want to make a racing game? I've actually thought about this, and I think the most interesting answer I can come up with would be Naughty Dog. The reason is that they've created such bombastic and fun set pieces in their games. All sorts of explosions, debris, intensity. In a sense, it would be similar to Split Second, how that game captured a mixture of intensity in the driving and in the environment. And it's not like they're unfamiliar with racing games. Jack X Combat Racing was supremely enjoyable, and to see that or something like that again would be pretty amazing. 